All right, now that we have our users in the software, the next thing we're gonna look at is adding the actual hardware or your panels to it. So I'm in the Aurora software. I'm gonna click on the globe here and I'm gonna go to hardware setup. Now you have some options in your drop down here, eight door panel, four door, two door, so on. I'm gonna add a one door panel cause that's what I've got on my little demo kit here. And it's telling me here, hey, make sure that is a CA150. Make sure you have software, or excuse me, firmware version 9.2 or higher. I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to call this one main entry door. Yep. If I turn my cap clock off, it would look better. It wants to know the serial number of the panel. That can be found on the panel. I'm going to input mine here. Password, key scan, that's fine. That's kind of built in the panel. Don't really want to change that unless you want to do a lot of extra work. Um, what's your time zone? Well, we're in Eastern time here, so I'll put that. COM port is always 3001 unless you change it. My IP address, I've got this panel set on this IP address as my demo. And the communication server is servers we set up in the software installation. That's just the name of my computer. So I'm going to save those options. I can also go to the Doors tab and name this door. And I'm going to name it the same as I did the panel, main entry panel. And you've got some options here, you know, operation mode. Most of your site's going to be unlock door and shunt the door contact. There's a few other options there. I'll leave you to dive in the key scan panels to find those options. But the basics are unlocks door, shunts door contact, unlock it for five seconds. A little extended entry for 10 seconds, things like that. We're really just trying to set up the main panel here. So I'm going to save that. And I really don't need to worry about any of these other things. My demo panel's going to work the way this is, and most of your sites are going to work with just these options we have here. I'm going to go ahead and add an eight door panel also so you can see what that looks like. Looks a little different because there's more options there. Again, it's asked me, are you sure it's a CA8500 and firmware's 9.2 or higher? I'm going to hit yes. And I'm going to call this one demo eight door panel. You can name it whatever you want. My serial number. And then again, what time zone are we in? You can put hardware notes here. You can put something like located in IT closet 123, something like that to make it easier for your text to find the panel. Give it my IP address. And I'm gonna save that. Now when I go to the doors tab, you're gonna see a lot more options. I'm gonna say this one is the, oh, we've got the office door for the staff. We've got the pool gate. We've got a side entry. We'll put maybe a fitness room. And I'm gonna put a parking garage. So you can put whatever your doors are, you can label them here. Now, if I go to additional settings, there's one thing that's here that's not on that CA150 panel. We've got to set our reader format. That's the big thing. Reader format by default set to key scan 36 bit, but for this integration with community, I've got to scroll all the way down this list to option S is in SAM for Kaba integrated 17 byte. That is a specialized format we use for this integration. Now, the reason you didn't see that option on the CA150 panel is because on that panel, it's actually controlled with the dip switches on the panel. I believe it's S2, one through six. You have to set those for that format. Look at the panel um, setup paper and it'll tell you exactly what dip switches should be set where for that. But that's all there is to it. So I've got those panels set up in here. The other thing that I would need to do with my panels is actually go to the panel and set up my IP address in the panel. So you see I've got two panels listed here. I've got to actually take that IP address that I put in here into the panel. Uh, there's a couple ways to do it. If you're using a Netcom 2P or the CA150 network port, 
you can actually take a computer, put it on the same network as that panel with the same default setup. I believe the default IP address in those 192.168.100.100, I think, but verify that on your paperwork. You can take your laptop, set it to something similar, plug in the panel, run the configuration software to set it, or the way I do it is I have the little USB to RS-232 cable that I plug into the panel, run the configuration software, send the IP address to the panel, quick and easy, and I don't have to mess with the network settings on my computer. So once you do that, one final note on your panel setup. Do the hard reset that is recommended in the setup guides. The panels are tested at the factory. Take every panel that's made, put it on the wall, test it for 24 hours to make sure we don't have any issues. That's why every panel we send out works when it gets to the site. So there is a little bit of a program in there already. We want to get that out. We want to make sure you blow that out before putting it on your system just so you don't have any kind of data corruption issues or anything. So follow the instructions for your panel to, to erase that. With the CA-150s, you turn on dip switch 1.9, short uh, jumper 6, then short jumper 1. You'll hear the panel beep for two minutes, and it's reset. For the... Uh, Larger panels, your 250, 4500, and 8500, you actually, I believe it's press the button on S3, I believe, and then wait five, no more than 10 seconds, so I always say wait seven seconds, and press S1 uh, button, and that will start the panel resetting. Again, if that panel does not beep a reset procedure for two minutes, it did not reset. If it does it for like five or 10 seconds, do the procedure again. Make sure you get that data out, then your panel will be set up and ready to go. All right, now that we have our panels in our software, we've actually got to put the address for these panels into the panel itself. So we have a couple ways of doing that. We can either plug a cable, network cable from our computer to our panel, or put them on the same network one way or the other and set our computer to a similar network address to the panel. I believe the CA150s and the Netcom 2Ps, I believe now come with an address of 192.168.100.100. You might want to verify that in the paperwork though. Um, you can set your computer to a similar address, plug it in there, run the Netcom configuration software, and actually set the IP address in the panel. Me, I like to use a USB to RS-232 converter. That way I'm not changing the network settings on my computer. I just plug it in my computer, connect it to the pins on the panel, send the change through the Netcom configuration software, and I'm good to go. I think it's faster. I like it better. Yeah, I've got to make sure I have that cable with me, but I've always got it with me, so I think that's a better way to do it. Now, once you get that IP address set in the panel, there's one other thing we need to do. Every panel we ship out has been tested at the factory. We actually put it on the wall, test it for 24 hours, then we box it up and send it out to you. That way you know the panel's gonna work when you get it. They just do. You know, we've already tested it for you, you're not gonna have any issues with it. So because we tested at the factory, there's a little bit of a program in there already. We wanna get that out of the panel. So if we're using a CA-150, we actually wanna turn on dip switch 1.9 and then short the, I believe it's jumper six, then jumper one, the clear memory jumper, and you'll start getting some beeps out of the panel, kind of a little heartbeat beep, going for about two minutes. Now, if it only goes for a few seconds, repeat that procedure. It's gotta go for the full two minutes to clear that data. Once it starts doing the beep, you can turn that um, S1.9 uh, dip switch back off. You don't need it anymore, it's just to turn on the reset feature. Now, if you're using one of the multi-door panels, like a two-door, four-door, eight-door, one of the elevator control panels, those have a little bit different procedure. There's two little jumpers on, or buttons on there labeled S3 and S1, if memory serves. The one is right at the bottom of the dip switches, I believe is S3. You're gonna hit it. You're gonna wait at least five seconds, no more than 10 seconds. So I normally tell people, wait seven seconds. Then you're gonna hit the S1 button that's up there beside the dip switches near the top. It's gonna start that same beeping going. And again, if it doesn't go for two minutes, do it again. That's gonna clear all the data out of your panels. That way you can send all the data from your laptop to the panel once you get all of your settings in there the way you want. And hey, if you did everything right, you should get a nice little green light on that panel telling you it's talking to your software. Next time, join us for setting up access groups.